Being a chiropractor that focuses in proper alignment of the spine, um, we talk about cervical lordosis very commonly, not only with our patients that actually have scoliosis, but even patients that may not even have scoliosis. And a lot of pa people come in my office and I tell them that you have lost their cervical lordosis and they don't know what I really mean. What well, the cervical lordosis is the proper curvature of the spine and the bend should be towards the front of the body, meaning you should look like a C where the bend is going forward. And that normal lordosis is the proper anatomy of the spine to help the anatomy of the spine function properly and all the components of the spine function properly. And when we look at the spine, we look at two uh, normal positions. And we know from the front, the spine should be completely straight. It should have no curvatures. And then from the side, it should be curved. It should have a forward curve in the neck, it should have a backwards curve in the mid back and a forward curve in the lumbar spine. And these curves are actually the proper alignment to actually help the spine deal with gravitational forces help the spine protect the nerves and the discs and the tissues around the spine and also help the spine move and function properly. The spine in the proper alignment needs very little muscle contractions to hold it in position. So it's very relaxed in this position because the way the bones are designed actually help hold and maintain this, these proper curvatures. Now the problem is a lot of times you hear patients that they have lost their normal lordosis in their neck and now they have a kyphosis. Are they the same? Well, no, no. When you're supposed to have a forward curvature in the neck, that's called a lordosis. If it's bent in the opposite direction, meaning the bend is towards the back of the body, not the front of the body, that's called a kyphosis. Now, a kyphosis in the neck is abnormal, but a kyphosis in the thoracic spine or mid-back is normal because a normal mid-back will actually bend in the opposite direction. And the same thing is also true for the lumbar the spine. The lumbar spine should have a healthy lordosis. If it's bent towards the back of the spine, it's abnormal and it'll be called a kyphosis. So sometimes a kyphosis can be normal if it's in the proper area. Sometimes a lordosis can be normal if it's in the right area. So understand this again, I know it's a little confusing, but I wanna make sure you guys understand, is a lordosis should be in the neck and low back. A kyphosis should be in the thoracic spine the opposite position in those areas is abnormal, meaning a kyphosis in the neck or a kyphosis in the low back is abnormal. A lordosis in the thoracic spine is also abnormal. So what does it mean when you have a loss of lordosis and how does this affect your body? That means the curve in your neck has now lost its normal position. And when it loses the normal curvature, the spine will be, be straighter on an X-ray or on an image. The loss of this lordosis affects what, how the tissues of the spine are working, in particular the spinal cord, the discs, the nerves, and the muscles and tissues surrounding it. Improper alignment of weight-bearing bones will have a negative effect on whatever those bones are as well. So it can affect not only the tissues, but it can affect the bones of the spine themselves. What are some symptoms? What are things that you can feel as a result of this loss of lordosis? Well, most common thing is that you can have pain, you can have headaches, you can have pain going down into your arms and weaknesses, you can have disc degeneration, bone degeneration, you can have spinal stenosis. There's a lot of things associated with these uh, asymmetries or misalignments of the spine, and particularly loss of lordosis. What can actually physically cause a loss of lordosis? Well, unfortunately, there's many causes. Um, most, most common is injuries, having some type of injury or trauma. It may not be even be relevant to this day. Typically, the trauma happens a long time ago. It gets left uncorrected, and, the, and it manifests itself into this loss of cervical lordosis into where you know, 15, 20 years from now, you're dealing with this loss of curve. You're seeing a lot of disc degeneration. You're seeing a lot of issues. Um, there are other causes as well outside of injuries. It could be repetitive, repetitive traumas, meaning like uh, job space, workspace, repetitive traumas over time, doing the same bad posture over time. Unfortunately, today, what I'm seeing to be the biggest impact on people's spines is technology. Kids are growing up looking down on screens, looking at these phones and looking at iPads and looking at laptops that they're always looking down, which takes this normal lordosis and actually causes it to decrease and a lot of times invert. In fact, there's a diagnosis called now text neck because it's gone so pre prevalent in our society. 
I'm unfortunately seeing worse and worse and worse cervical lordosis in younger and younger and younger patients. And unfortunately, I don't see this improving in any short time. So these things can have a very negative effect on the body because if somebody at 10 or 12 or 13 already has a complete kyphosis in their neck and to think they have 60 years for that to manifest over their life, what that can lead to. You know, when I was uh, in chiropractic college, I was taught that, you know, cervical kyphosis and really bad cervical spines position-wise only existed in patients that were in their 30s. I'm seeing it in their teenagers right now. So unfortunately, I'm seeing uh, this happen and this, this, this condition become more epidemic as technology infiltrates our lives and our ADLs. And this is over 25 years of me, become, me being a chiropractor focusing on spinal position. Now, one question I get asked a lot is I see a lot of scoliosis patients that have loss of lordosis. And why is that? Like, is there a correlation? Could one be causing the other? There's definitely a relationship, and we know for sure there's a relationship with scoliosis and loss of lordosis. And I know, well, how can that be? If one's a bend this way, how can it affect the bend this way? Because what happens when you deal with scoliosis is not only does the curve bend like this, but it also flattens the normal thoracic kyphosis. Well, you can see if you have a normal thoracic kyphosis bent backwards like this, and you have a cervical lordosis on top of it, you see these, these two things kind of relate to each other. Well, the flatter this becomes, the flatter this will become. Meaning as the curve goes this way, it flattens this way. So patients with scoliosis are very commonly to have something called flat back syndrome. They don't have a normal kyphosis in the mid back. And if they lose the kyphosis in the mid back, they're gonna lose cervical lordosis. One question I get asked a lot is, well, is the loss of cervical lordosis what's causing my scoliosis? Well, the truth is, we don't know. We don't know which one came first or which one came second. All we know, we have to deal with both. But what I do know is trying to improve a cervical lordosis in a patient with scoliosis and not addressing their scoliosis normally won't produce a good result in trying to improve their lordosis. You have to change both at one time. So you really have to improve both positions of the spine simultaneously. So when we deal with patients that have scoliosis and loss of cervical lordosis, we address the entire spine from skull to pelvis to get the most proper realignment of all the normal positions from the front and the side at one time. So if you have a loss of cervical lordosis, what should you be looking for and what should be some concerns? Well, unfortunately we know this, that once the spine has lost its normal alignment, and it's not in the proper position, your, your, your cause of progression over time is now gravity. And we can't eliminate the effects of gravity over time. So the longer you leave your lordosis uncorrected, the worse effect it's gonna have on the bones, the discs, the muscles, the tissues, and the nerves, and the spinal cord. The sooner you restore that position, the less effect it's gonna have on you long-term. So there's no benefit in leaving a cervical lordosis or loss of lordosis uncorrected. You wanna correct it as soon as possible to help improve the position of that spine, help improve that and preserve the integrity of those bones and discs. The, the longer you leave it there, the worse it's gonna get. So my first advice is get it evaluated and start working on correcting the position because gravity is what now what's causing the progression and we cannot eliminate that cause, unfortunately. So we have to deal with the position of the spine. There's really no other way at helping your, your condition of that loss of cervical lordosis. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.